Yeah, so just uh, found a weak spot in the floor again. That's, uh, that's my toes getting wet. Of course I'm being an idiot. This is stupid, 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 stupid. Please don't sink. Before we get into this week's video, I wanted to let you know that I'm getting some of my designs made into jigsaw puzzles. I'm sure someone asked for a jigsaw of my original map about three years ago, and I'm finally making it a reality. I'm also using two of my recent Narrowboat illustrations, so there's three designs to choose from. I'm taking pre-orders in the shop now, and the jigsaws will ship out in early June. They're being professionally printed and cut in the UK, and I'm so happy with the quality of the finished product. But because I didn't know how many to order, it just made sense to take pre-orders to ensure that anyone who wants one will get one. If you're wanting to order from overseas, please check in the shop in a couple of days, as I'm hoping to add some international shipping options. Now back to today's video. This is another of our renovation videos and here we're about six weeks into the work. The number of jobs are spiraling out of control and morale aboard Perseverance is not fantastic. The first job of the day is to remove this piece of oak which was used to support the old radiator cover. You can see how orange the oak faced wood has become here. This is something we desperately want to update if possible. So it's crazy that so much workmanship went into this when it didn't go into other areas. But this is the hanger that the radiator cover went on and they've plugged the screw holes with bits of oak. You can't even see it, it's behind the radiator cover. Yeah. The places where they did these little touches of, you know, not wanting to have a unsightly screw hole. Needless to say, we're getting rid of the radiator cover as well. Yeah. We're going to move the location of this radiator. It's opposite the stove and we're going to be moving it further back in the boat opposite the dinette. We also think that the cover is pretty ugly. And finally, the shelf that was created by the radiator cover is pretty useless as it's so close to the gunnel. <laughs> our, uh, our boat was held together by all these screws. Right, so I'm about to do one of the many little almost inconsequential jobs. Um, we have a calorifier which has an Eberspacher attached to it. The Eberspacher heats our central hot water system. We need to drain the central hot water system. The central hot water system drain that has been installed is um, in a problematic place and uh, it won't allow you to actually attach a hose or a pump or anything. So basically what we've got is just a, a little T cut off followed by a pipe which just leads down to the ground and if you turn it on your antifreeze floods the boat. Um, never been a fan of it, never really liked the idea. So what I'm going to do is install one of these little stop cocks or drain cocks um, and uh, yeah I'm gonna just use John Guest slip fit connector to take it to the 15 mil pipe uh, leaving the original stop connect uh, stopcock in place for now so that I don't disturb anything and drain antifreeze all over my floor. Um, yes, but I'm just going to cut it back, put that in place, then I'm going to attach a hose pump, turn the whole thing on, and drain the system. That's the goal. So you can see the original here is there's a stopcock and there's a pipe which leads to nowhere. That just, if you turn that right now and open it, we get antifreeze all over the floor. Draining our expansion tank up here. And whatever's in there and whatever is up above this point on the floor. Now this is problematic for draining it because really this whole thing should be near the bottom in order to actually drain the pipes that go out that way uh, to the radiator and that way to the bathroom radiator or towel radiator. Uh, so it's a bit of a silly system but at least I'll be able to drain to this point here and then in theory be able to disconnect put the drain down here or put the pump down there and pull out everything from down below. So that's the idea. So I'm just going to install this on there and this. Okay, so here we are, day N plus one. Um, we are, well, yesterday we did the demolition of the um, 
cooker area where there was some cabinetry that was built in to make it so that the vinette cooker that we had could just be slotted in. We're not going to replace the vinette cooker. Those are discontinued. Um, and we don't want a built in really anyway. We'd prefer a standalone, or at least we think we would prefer a standalone at the moment. So that meant taking that out. Taking that out revealed more water damage. And um, unfortunately, Joe, well, <laughs> she she leaned down yesterday and, uh, and well, she put her hand down to try and, while she was cleaning around and picking up screws and stuff, and she put her hand down on a bit of the water damage and her hand, her thumb kind of went right through it. So she, you know, finger pressure alone pushed it down below. And so we've got some visible water down there, which means that at least back to the next steel batten, which is about 18 inches behind where the front of the stove was, um, there's water. And we've got a patch of water damage around where the shower pump was. So at the moment, we're now looking at water damage beside the pressure pump, water damage beside the shower pump, water damage that went under the linoleum and under the... Um, oven, the two walls of our X cabinet set um, have water damage. It wasn't just the kickboard that we could, you know, finger pressure destroy. So I'm going to take down the kitchen cabinet centerpiece here um, so that we can begin looking at how we patch up the floor and get rid of the water. Good fun. Yep, so just uh, found a weak spot in the floor again. That's, uh, that's my toes getting wet. There we go. At least it's not important. Uh, today, I put my foot in the exact wrong place while moving, and the whole front of my shoe went through. So now we've got a size 14 triple E hole in the boat. Um, US or UK, 12.5 UK, whatever. Anyway, we've got a big hole in the boat where my foot went through. Uh, and uh, and yeah, now we just have to sort of hammer it back, find out where the bad ends, and uh, and then drain it, and then dry it, and then patch it after cutting it back. So that's where we're at. It's not that much water. Question is, should I take out the waste pump first or anything? Or... Michael does remove the old waste pump. This is the pump that took the water from the shower and pushed it out the side of the boat. It's a simple case of disconnecting the water pipe and the 12 volt electricity. Now to see how badly damaged this floor is. I guess 18 years of boat life can do this to a kitchen floor. See if it's gone here. Yeah. yeah, it's soft there. Now we just need to work out how much wood we need to cut away. We desperately don't want to take away any more than we need to, as we don't want this kitchen renovation to get any more out of control than it already is. From there to here. Or we're changing the board all the way out to there. Then you can harden this wood back up again and you can and you can repair it. Mm -hmm. It's not a finished surface. You don't need to pull the pin that turns into the hand ring. You know, because then otherwise you're under the gunnels. To get under the gunnels, you then need to strip in the wall to get to where it fits to the rail at the side. Otherwise you can't repair and suddenly you're taking more and more and more apart. So mm -hmm. I think a patch. I have this feeling that when we start the hatch, we're going to end up wanting to have the plumbing out. Yeah. So let's <laughs> have it out then. All right. So yeah, we've got water underneath the kitchen and the floorboards in the kitchen or the baseboard, the subfloor in the kitchen um, has failed. The plan is to try and patch it rather than replace the whole board 
um, because then we'd have to take down more furniture, like a lot more furniture. So before we try and do the patch, uh, we need to get rid of all the wood that's rotted and we need to pump out any of the water that's gathered down there. Um, it's really not great news, but I'm so glad we know about it and I'm so glad we're dealing with it. Um, and yeah, I mean, the boat's 20 years old, so this could have been happening the whole time. Um, so we just need to make sure that it doesn't happen again and that we fix the issue that's there. Before we pump the water out, we're just going to remove all the plumbing that's running down the back of the kitchen because uh, it needs to come out at some point and we might as well take it out before there's a big hole or a bigger hole in the kitchen floor. Since the last video, we've decided to take this opportunity to redo some of the plumbing and replace the pipes. So it's now time to remove the plumbing fittings from the kitchen. Okay, I'm about to drain water. This could get funny. This could get funny real quick, actually. Okay, there's the cold side. Here Michael is trying to drain any remaining water. <laughs> You've gone quite pink. I know! There's nothing coming out now. Oh yeah it is. Well, this is stupid. I'm being an idiot. Of course I'm being an idiot. This is stupid, 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 stupid. What, you're emptying the chlorophyll? No, I'm emptying the chlorophyll, but the one at the red here comes out of the top of the chlorophyll. So what I'm trying to do is a pressurize the top of the chlorophyll and blow water up the bottom. Mm -hmm. Because I'm blowing into the cold water system. Yeah. Yeah, I should be blowing into the hot water system and letting gravity and expansion help rather than blowing bubbles into the bottom of the chlorophyll. But that wouldn't be as much fun. Wouldn't be as much fun for the rest of you. I get that. There we go. That's why they were being such a pig is because I didn't undo it first. Okay. <laughs> um, do I need to put an insert in? No. Not for the end cap? Nope. That's the pressure pump for the cold water feed disconnected and the feed pipe capped off. And now Andrew is disconnecting the accumulator. The pumps or new pumps will be going back, so we need to keep the wiring in place. The ones with the black tape are the pressure pumps. The ones without the black tape are the... The black water. Are the black water, yeah. So all the plumbing at the back is out now, and we're trying to decide how big a hatch we need to cut to make sure we get rid of all the 
compromised wood, but not take away too much. Is that right? So that we, yeah, the idea is to cut away as much of the compromised wood as possible without hitting the steel and uh, without cutting through the side of the boat or the bottom of the boat and without uh, uh, going back to the point where we can't support it. Like if we get to too big of a piece, if too big of a patch comes out, then we end up having to replace the whole board. Um, so yeah, Andrew is trying to figure out the sort of right the optimal. optimum bit to cut. I'm staring at it going, please don't sink. What I'm hoping is we can kind of come back to about here rather than getting too too close to there because this is, that's probably a bit soft from George, whereas I think there's where we've got to come to. Okay, now for the moment of truth. Andrew is about to cut a huge hole in our narrowboat's floor. Do you need to hold that straight or anything? I'm going to try and put my knee on it. I'm going to put my foot on it. Yeah, you can put a bit of foot. I'm going to try and drop into there. So. Please don't sever foot. Rather than break it out, should we go through with the multi-tool and, and just try and lift it all out? Uh, the corners are jammed in and it's probably not quite all the way through. We can run over it briefly. You can follow the, the gap with the multi-tool and that will probably get us to the point where it will come out. Otherwise, we just need it to break. So we didn't go all the way through and there's timber. So we've already got our fixings there. Yeah. We're straight back in. Yeah. With a new piece and then, you know, the rest of this isn't rotten. No. <sighs> kind of feels good that it's gone, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Thankfully, our bilge has steel walls dividing it into sections. So the water is confined to this very small space. That's the kind of drama. Joe's going to start pumping out the water. Andrew and I will be um, ballast. So we're going to go out and tilt the boat. All the water will run to the outside edge, pooling deepest over there. So all you're going to have to do is take the hose with the steel wool at the end, which we've just, I've, I've duct taped it on as a temporary filter. Push it as far down as you can to try and hold it into the corner. Yeah. Ideally towards the back of the boat. Mm -hmm. um, 
Then flip on the switch and it'll start pumping out. That switch there. That switch right there. We've just connected a motorcycle battery to a, a little impeller pump. And if you see any major stuff getting through the into the water, mm -hmm. um, anything like bits of rust, you know, larger things, turn it off because we don't want that getting into the impeller. Good thing that doesn't reverse. <laughs> it's like, put the switch the wrong way and suck the slough into the boat. Just we drain the slough on and say, you don't have to. We can get in with a wet vac and do most of the rest. We just want to pump out the bulk of it. Well, and it looked horrifying, but like... That looks much better than the hole, to be honest, even though it's like 10 times the size. Yeah. But you see the ripples in the steel, it's not marked at all. It's not, it's done nothing to it. We're using a heater and a dehumidifier to try and completely dry out the section of the build. So we can paint it and get the patch in place as soon as possible. Yeah, just have to redirect it. Okay, cool. All right, so, uh, next job of every job uh we're going to drain the radiator system the uh, central heating on our boat we've got a little um sort of like a fish pump uh, oil pump not oil pump water pump whatever it's a pump and uh it's being driven by the motorcycle battery we've got the john guest installed with a uh drain cock which is, you know, a little brass thing with a 15 millimeter end. Um, it's got a little square nut on one end and it'll open up the valve. I don't have the right hose for the barbel, so basically I've just shoved in the smallest, uh, the, the nearest diameter tube that I've got. And um, hopefully this all works. The point of no return will be when I open this guy, then that guy, and we start it. So, you know, looking forward to trying it. Going to feed us in. If I can rotate the freaking thing. Let's see. I normally go clockwise, screw it down, and I'm going this way, clockwise, screw it down, anti clockwise. So I need to be turning it clockwise from my perspective. There we go. There's liquid coming already. Finally, we just need to drain the radiators. Up, thumb over the pipe upside down and then we could ignore the radiator we're, we're, we're solved right okay so it's going to come off at the peanut there yeah, yeah okay so, up thumb over upside down and we're all good nothing came out yeah So that was a day in the life of our narrowboat renovation, a day full of jobs that we didn't know we'd be doing when we started the project. Next time join us to find out why my head is stuck underneath the well deck doing yet another job we hadn't anticipated. Mm -hmm.